Hey, Ian, you ready? I bet I am. What are we talking about tonight? And talk about guns? If it's not a 30 cal, I'm not in. Jeez, mate, that's not very inclusive. Have you seen Jono? Hey, Jono, you ready? Well, God knows where he is, mate. He's probably caught up in the neighbor's wire again. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Mate, I'm ready. Let's crank it up. Righto then. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of The Hunter's Campfire where we're going to talk about all things hunting and the great outdoors. And we'll probably throw in a few tips along the way. You want a tip? Say it once, say it a thousand times. Goats love rocks. Or a few things about deer. Mark, what do you reckon about deer? As a deer hunter, I love hunting pigs. Well, that's about as useful as I expected it to be. Oh, check it out. Here comes Jono. He's being chased by the neighbor's dog. Okay, guys, let's get this started. Welcome to the Hunter's Campfire. Pull up a chair, get comfortable, it's time for the Hunter's Campfire. Prepare dessert competition dessert. I saw that today. Very, very diligent of them. Frank's yeah. gonna get ready. The uh, yeah, there's some se- secret sauce going on that. Oh, that isn't there ever? It's far out. Uh, I, had a, with I had a customer written on them. I had a customer come through the shop saying he um he we made a, a cob loaf down there at the last camp. Oh, I can't remember his name now, but he reckons he yeah done a done a good job on the cob loaf. <laughs> cob loaf. Oh, cob. Was that yeah not, yeah uh, Willie? I think no, not Dave. Not Dave. There was another bloke, and he said he'd been doing a he, he won a dessert composition with the with, with the cob loaf. <laughs> oh. oh, who won that? I feel bad. Sure. I feel oh. bad. I should know these oh. things because they're they're pretty that. <laughs> the um, prestigious awards we hand out. Yeah. For, dessert. <laughs> uh, for those that are listening that are attending camp, just a quiet reminder that if it pairs with custard, I like it, and I'm judging. So. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. It's important. It's important. Mine is cooked. Mine is mine is cooked in a custard. How does that sound? Oh, oh so you've been. Oh, you you're prepared. Yeah. I'm prepared, mate. I am entering as well. There's bragging rights on this. So Ooh, there, wow. is, there is absolutely bragging rights. Okay, so Jono's entering. I thought. No, uh, I've still got um three bags of pre-mixed self-sourcing chocolate pudding from last year that I could throw in a camp oven and see how it turns out. That's Ooh. cheating. Is it? I don't, I don't see that as cheating. It's the man pre-mix. had to go to oh, work right. to make that money. Oh, it's my pre <laughs> <It's not gonna laughs> yeah. Right, okay. I put yeah, it okay. in there so that I had the right quantities and I didn't have to do it in camp. <laughs> that's, an, okay. you know, that's smart. It's, I, I just thought you'd bought a box from Coles and you uh, were no, going to no. mix it. Yeah, up. but you got to you got to go to work. You got to work. You get money. You buy from Coles. You know, it's just oh, like one, one. Well, that's yeah, well, that's right. That's work. Um, the thing I was going to plan to do, which I I'm pretty damn good. And now that I know you're bringing your inverter, we talked about your inverter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> But also, there's a couple of Jennies going. There's a bloody, I don't know how big the old mate's caravan's going to be. So, there's going to be some stuff. I make a killer, a killer golden syrup dumplings on the, uh, on the, in, in the camp oven. But mm. you need a good 240 volt mixer because you need to really aerate the, the, the dough. <laughs> and I, I just take a cordless drill. Oh, you're on it. Yeah, yeah, get a Ryobi, you know, take it, your it, Ryobi it, cordless it, drill, 18 volt, <laughs> boom, and I'll mix the hell out of it, you know. That's the go. You could probably yeah. get the dough hook in and, and connect it to the drill. Yeah, I reckon. I'll weld the, yeah, the shape it. onto it if yeah, I have to. Yeah, it's easy. It's, it's just get, if you got, yeah, you'll be able to do that. See, this, is, this is why the Hunter's Campfire is gold. All of these things that you pick up. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I don't know if you've seen, Ryobi have now got a thing where it basically – you know, you can do like a, there's a, um, uh, there's actually power packs you can use to drive with the 18 volt batteries. Yeah. You can get an inverter that goes on the, on to the road. You can get all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I've got like a dozen of those batteries that I thought. Run that by me again. Hang on. You get an so inverter. You know, onto you your, know you the, power, yeah. Power battery. You, your, your drill battery. Yeah. Yeah. You can get huh. an inverter 
that's just basically powered by their 18 volt battery. Mm. Oh, I noticed a, power pack. a coffee, a pod machine that play, that you could use their battery. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and if you want to start a fire, you know, you just take your little air blower. Mm. Just get a fan yeah. force of it. We got get that to... one down, Pat. There's enough you fire know, maniac in the crew. If you, want, if, you, if, if you don't like your reciprocating mm. saw, you can use it to chop up bones. <laughs> So um, um, so what we're saying is there's no excuse to bring <laughs> the best dessert because we've got some pretty damn cool prizes, if you can see. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right. So I'm just Thumbs holding up. up another Zolio because we love to talk about Zolios. Um, here's a heads up. So these ones, I've got these two. These I've got two Zolios here. That These are the demo ones that have got full subscription plans running on them for people to use while we're in camp. So if you've never used a Zolio, you get to play with one, um, or at least you get to arm wrestle over who gets one of the two. There's 30 people coming. Um, but we also have two to give away. And uh, after a really cool conversation with Zolio the other day, they've upped the game. They were going to give us the two with subscriptions. They're now giving us the two with full open access subscription to every feature, not just the baseline subscription. So they'll be turned Ooh. on with every feature Zolio has to offer. And you'll get that for, I think, it'll be turned on for three months after you win it. So you'll get to go use it over the hunting season and enjoy it. I think that's a cracking prize. Well, that's incentive enough to win that, that dessert competition. Yeah, We're calling it here, Jono. We're talking about how we're going to give all of this merch away. We'll have to put a Zolio <laughs> on the dessert. I think so. I think that's that's yeah. got to be it. First Mate, prize. I think you're going to need to just take like a chook wheel or something like that. <laughs> just go, okay, guys. <laughs> it's you, you win. There's always going to be lucky dip. Lucky dip. You've done something cool. Good on you. Go get a prize. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah, of Zolio, yeah, that's we should Zolio. say... That Zolio uh, is the way to go. Yeah. You love oh, them. Yeah. You use them, don't you, Michael? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, a game changer. Yeah, um, as soon as you guys started promoting, I was, I was looking at a few different models, and then I, I seen you guys promoting the Zolio, and I looked into the video that you guys did. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's perfect. And I've only got, like, the budget pack, so just, like, the the, the brief messages. But mm. it's enough to stay in contact with the wife and uh, make sure the kids aren't uh, driving her to the edge of insanity while I'm away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't want to know if yeah. they are, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lose that. Uh, I had no signal excuse. That's the only problem with that one. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's probably worth mentioning yeah. that Bridget from Zolio is uh, moving, moving on. on. Unfortunately, so if you're listening, Bridget, Badly. thank you very much for all your support and help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she and was. We great. appreciated it, and uh, good luck in your new endeavours. Hmm. Yeah. What else have you Does got it? in that um, in that prize pack, Hells? Because we had a chat about it, and there's just merch coming out of your ears. So. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so uh, the two Zolios to give away. We've got a pair of binos that um, Beretta have hooked us up with. They're um, they're Burris. Uh, I think they're Timber Forty Twos. I think I'd have to go and have another yeah. look at them. Um, so someone will win the binos. We had binos last year too. They were they were a bit of a hit. Uh, we've got a butcher's set. So um, you know, some so a, a good knife set for someone who brings in. I think we're going to say the first deer, yeah. first hold um, deer, first hold deer. Now, yep. now let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this again. If you're listening into this, this, this is the rules of the camp. Last year, uh, the first hold deer came in. They took that literally. Um, the first hold deer oh, came with yeah. its guts still in. Yeah. Um, we don't mind if you leave the guts in the paddock. Yeah, you don't fine. need to bring yeah, that extra 30 fine. kilos. <laughs> you can drag it out without the guts. It's okay. Yeah, we, we're okay yeah, with the that. Whole carcass, that's, yeah. probably, the whole carcass. that's probably worth clearing. But what, what you don't want to do is you don't want someone to come in like if there's two prizes for deer and someone brings in half, the four quarters and then someone brings in the, the, the rear quarters and they've just split it in half to get two prizes. No, no, no. Carcass has got to be attached. You can't bring the quarters. You've got to drag that whole bastard out and bring it back to yeah. camp. Yeah. It's got to be it's it. got to be able to hang it in the tree so people can learn how to butcher. That's mm. the whole point. Mm. And at the end of it, you get to keep that knife set. That's important. So, yeah. You do. Yeah, we'll break yes. it down with that knife set and then you get to keep it. And it's a great knife set. It's the same as the one that we used up in the Territory. Yep. Pull some buffalo parts apart. Mm-hmm. Um, did a really good job, so we're happy with that. Uh, over here in the boxes to my left, I have more hats than you can possibly throw at everybody, all <laughs> sorts of different types. Gundog gear of throwing some hats in, some shirts and some other dog equipment for oh, the guys that are in nice. um, 
indicators so they'll get something a bit special um, we've got shirts we've got stubby coolers we've got pens we've got fidget frisbees if you don't fidget. know what a fidget, fidget fidget frisbee is hang on Guys, popping got, things. did i say hats got more hats Oh, hey, here's a fidget. Here's a fidget frisbee. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a Zolio yeah. frisbee. So if you if you uh, if you're a bow hunter and you and you miss, <laughs> you throw the frisbee at the deer, and and maybe it will entice it to come back. But yeah, or you could leave it somewhere back. where your mate steps on it. <laughs> if you're sitting there bored, you can fidget the frisbee. Um, I'll, oh, give it a crack. I'll give it a crack. You give it a crack. I'll hold I'll one. Um, I've got um, I've got a stash of I don't know thirty current magazines from just about every provider of hunting magazines there is uh, for people to keep themselves entertained in the downtime. What else? I've got stuff from the DPI coming, and we've got some stuff from Huntech coming, and oh, mm -hmm. just stuff. There's lots of stuff. Anyway, if you're not coming to Hunt Camp, hope you feel jealous. Tune in next year. Maybe you can come. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if you're not coming, you're welcome to pop into camp, even if you don't have a, a spot. And I'm sure we can pop with a little bit of merch because there's enough of it going I'm sure around. We can give you some stuff. <laughs> What's Just the go with camping down there? Are you guys camping out there, uh, Ponderosa, or no, we can't. So no. yeah, um, yeah. We had to choose a park that had the most booking spots. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, at the time that was Tuggalo, uh, because yeah, they okay. closed a whole bunch of the spots down. Tuggalo had 25 spots. Nundle only had 20, Hang and Rock had one or two, two. at the time. Mm. Um, but we picked Nundle just because it's the bigger park and it's central to yeah. everything else. Uh, and then partway yeah. through partway through the booking process, you know, they do the um, they do the quarter update. Well, the quarter yeah. update hasn't happened yet, but they released another six spots. So it pushed that number From up there. to 26 spots. So out of, um, the 26 spots plus some surrounding ones with um, – Tugalo and Tamala, yeah, there's roughly 30 people yeah. coming into camp. 30 people, wow, awesome. Yeah, so it'll be really good. good um, yeah, some of the, most of them are there for the whole time, um, but some yeah. are just coming in for two or three days. Some are just coming to visit and have a have a yarn around the campfire and come and come yeah, and for sure. Them, yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's all time um, out there. Yeah, yeah, and like 30 people sounds like a lot, but um, and it is a lot to be fair, but. You know, usually mm. these parks get booked out during this time of year anyway, and you don't know who's oh, in the yeah. parks around you. We yeah, at least yeah, um, yeah. we have a map up in camp, and we sort of zone off areas that people are hunting. Mm. You can't yeah. stop them. Hunt, you know, other people going into those areas, that, but certainly if someone's yeah. working that place, you can you that, can you know let everyone know that it's you know yeah. probably don't come and poke around in there at the same time. That's one thing I've I've often wondered when I'm booked into a spot, say there's only two hunters allowed in that forest and I'm booked in with somebody else. I'm kind of like, oh, man, I wish I could talk to them and be like, where are they going? Like, you know, what, you know, where they're planning to be for that day so I don't ruin their plans or, or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. usually find if you do bump into them, everyone's more than happy to take their separate locations. Oh, yeah. Oh, Unless 100%. It's or, or, you, or you might even end up working together. That's oh. normally the way it's gone for me. So, um, yeah, but I mean that's that's sort of our way to try and keep it as safe as we can. We we separate where the hunters are, and there are plenty of people mm. coming that haven't hunted Nundle, so you know they're coming, you know, as a blank canvas. So we can send them into yeah. areas that currently aren't zoned off, if you like, and uh, and and help them find you know good habitat, and hopefully they'll be just as successful. So the thing the thing about Nundle is the deer are everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Um, you, know, yeah. you can look at spots on a map that look great. Like, you know, yeah. everyone sort of, you know, leans towards the farm fringe country. But I think that sends the, the animals far more nocturnal. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you get into the bush, you're going to find the deer anyway. There's creeks and habitat all, all the yeah. way through it. So, I found yeah. it as well. As soon as you switch off and you think the deer aren't around, that's when you bump them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark. Always. Always. No, I, I, I think, yeah, you, you can overthink it sometimes. Yeah, you can get mm. kind of too caught up in it and think, oh, it's you know, it's got to, this has got to happen and things like that. And mm. if the sign's there and you keep following it and you keep coming across more sign, and eventually you're you're going to run them down, and they're you know they're mm. going to be in front of you or they're going to be crossing you or something like that. So yeah, it's you you know you just keep at it. I think uh, you know e scouting can, as Ian said, e scouting can give you a good idea, but. It's an idea. It's on the ground that it's going to matter. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
Yeah, you know, it's um, it's incredible how many people contact us to say, "Hey, we're going to uh, we're going to Nundal, we're going to Hanging Rock. Um, does this look like a good spot to you?" Mm. At least they've done a bit of their own homework and they're coming to us and saying, "This is where I think." Yeah, but I yeah. tell you, most people point at exactly the same spot. Everyone looks yeah. at what looks really good, and that's going to be, you know, probably yeah. a farm fringe with easy access off the road with maybe mm. a dam. Yeah, um, you yeah. know, there's some key ingredients. Um, yeah. You know, if you're going to let if you're going to let everyone loose into the park at the same time, you know, half a dozen of them going to end up in the same spot because it looks really good on the map. Uh, yeah. if it looks good to you. It's you know, it's no secret. Yeah, it's going to look good to other people as well. Um, I, I start I start with looking at the topo maps like I, like you've taught me Ian with the, checking out those creek lines and those first contour lines just above them I'll, yeah. I'll look at those first and then I'll see what it looks like on Google Earth or something like that and then I'll go yeah sweet let's go there yeah mm. yeah yeah, that's no, that's where, never lead you astray. <laughs> that's where Rob's Rob's from Athena Spatial's maps come in. The the detail, yeah. the, quali the quality of those maps is just ridiculous. So if you're doing that e-scouting, yeah. that can make a big difference using those maps. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've, I've Have been you seen them, Michael. Uh, no, I listened to the podcast you guys did about it and the videos you put on it. I haven't quite dabbled into it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just been still running the old uh, the old Avenza. <laughs> Game changer, mate. Well, game, game changer. Yeah, I need it. I need it. I need it. Yeah. Yeah. Event that doesn't go away. This just gives you another map that goes on it that um, yeah. almost yeah. gives you tree to tree to tree yeah. visuals. Yeah, it's pretty visuals, good. Visuals. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I'm a bit slow on the technology, but the young fellas in the shop there, they, they're getting me up to date. <laughs> Keep me on my toes. It's going to be mm. interesting what it's like when you're on the ground again with that kind yeah. of clarity. Mm. 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 Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, <clears throat> mm, that should be good. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, before we kick off with that, I had another round of clay target this afternoon, which was good. The first time we've, um, I'm just getting the practice in Jono because we're going to call this competition shortly. It's going to happen, mate. It's got to happen. We we we, <laughs> we need to stop planning for it. That's for sure. Yeah, um, had the uh, the big camera out on slow mo, um, and the footage that it catches of. Oh. Uh, are you getting the, oh, the, the clays just going? You can see the ball bearings smashing the clays. It's so good. <laughs> so I'll chuck, I'll chuck some of that up for us to have a look at shortly. But uh, yeah, it's all it's good fun. We're just trying to figure out how to how to um, do manual zoom with these high definition cameras, so that you can spend enough time to know exactly where the focus needs to be, mm. manual focus, I should say, where the focus needs to be, where the clay is going to break, so yeah. that it's not trying to track something that's moving so mm. fast um but uh, we managed to get some pretty cool shots so it's gonna be fun cool. uh, we're gonna gonna might sacrifice a gopro shortly and uh <laughs> and put it on the top of the trap house <laughs> just to see what it looks like um i've got an old gopro here that's that's destined to die so we'll see how that goes i wonder if i could even strap it to a clay as it flies out it haven't figured this out yet it wouldn't fly there's a lot of you'd, force behind one of those. It'd be you'd be better just flinging the GoPro. Yeah, just, just right. using that. As the time. <laughs> oh no, put it put it on the trap and just let the trap fling in. One of those handheld. Yeah. I reckon you got one of those handheld flingers. Those clay but throwers. It, it, it just it would, all it will be though is like you know this ridiculous <laughs> high speed spin, like you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you throw it, there yeah. it is. The thing is, Bang. the you'll shoot as it's facing the other way. Of course, yeah. Well, you know, you'll but it won't it. spin. It'll 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 barrel roll. It'll do everything. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. maybe clear the airspace and put a sacrificial <laughs> drone up above it and get the top view of it. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm going to sacrifice the drone. No. <laughs> you, you could do that. You could put a, a fishing line on the drone and just hang it low so it's standing still. I don't think I'd still chance uh, it. <clears throat> nah. Well, we thought about we thought about uh, where is this thing? Hang on, wait. So. I've been thinking about this concept. Now, I'm giving away the trade secrets here, um, but I've been thinking about how to capture some cool video, and I thought that the drone, right, with mm -hmm. the clay attached to the front of it would catch really cool as if the clay was flying. Yeah. So, mm. so you could shoot it. Um, anyway, I'm just trying to figure out how to take some cool footage of clay targets <laughs> flying around. Because you want to use... Static, the, yeah. Be static thing. You want to do the fishing release that we use, and attach a clay. If you can drill a little hole into the clay, put a piece of fishing line and attach it to the um, to the bait release, and have the camera looking down on it, and then hit it. I reckon that could work. 
<clears throat> that would work. That would be yeah. that would be, well you could you face the camera down on the clay Correct. is what you're saying. Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. So yeah. He's... And then you hang it from a piece of fishing mm. line and then we we shoot the clay. It's gonna be a long piece of fishing line. <laughs> yeah. But... <clears throat> well no, you 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 know you and then you get the, have and it then... have it ten feet off the ground and you just shoot it. Mm. For the effect, and then you get the Avada to hang around on it with a tracking, and we can get different angles on it. I think we we could have a good play. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're coming up with all of these <laughs> dumb ideas. They're going to be fun. I'm going to lose a lot of camera gear, um, but that's the whole point. You got to sacrifice some goods to get the goods. So anyway, watch the space. <laughs> fun clay target shooting videos coming up. The other thing <laughs> is, if you had like with um, the way that they get. The macro nowadays, like the super macro, is that the camera is on a on a sled, and it takes one photo, and then it moves a tiny bit. So basically, it's so it always stays in focus, and then they stitch those all together. If you had multiple cameras on the clay when you launched it, you would get one of them would be mm. in. You know, you'd get the focus uh, that way. Gonna, Just gonna you know, take some clay. Get, it's it's a it's a tough business this is filming. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's uh that's, that's been my week. Lots of fun things going on. Super super pumped for work to bugger off and get out to hunt camp for ten days. It's gonna be unreal. Mm. Enough about that. Mark, shot any deer? Uh, yeah, shot deer last week. That was a last oh, week. We, we long, spoke, long time ago. Anyway. Mm. We're speaking about that. John, yeah, shot any deer? Uh, no, I got some stuff. Slow down, there. Hold, hold down. <laughs> He's probably bought some more Kuyu uh, gear or something like that. He wants to talk no, about no. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw this was coming oh, yeah. The Instagram Ooh. through so fast, I wasn't sure if it was yours. Yep. So the part one of uh, the Minecraft Madness BRX build is now in print. Uh, part two comes up um, next month, and it's going to have those pigs that we shot on. Marcus Hobbs place on oh, as the, mm. that's it so that comes up so that's uh, got that published this week and uh, been spending lots of money of course but uh, on the truck so I just redid the whole suspension which was not a cheap yeah. exercise did you get the big bright yellow yeah, did done. you get the yellow ones that you wanted uh, I did get some yellow mm. did it, did uh, yeah yellow springs yeah, mm. yeah got that so the Continuing D Max refreshes well continuing. Um that's that was the big spend this week and looking at going back up to the Brisbane Valley in the third week of uh April. Hopefully they'll be roaring. Yeah, it's been slow start, hey? Very slow. I haven't heard oh. I haven't seen anything about roaring deer yet. There's been a couple mm. on some of the, the Facebook groups, there's been a few shop, but not many. Um, but mm. yeah, the roaring's been pretty quiet up Brisbane Valley Way. I think maybe some of this rain coming through will change things, or this cold snap that we're talking about. But yeah, maybe that'll change yeah. it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I've had a few guys tell me that they reckon that this rain slowed seen, uh, slowed things down. Mm. Yeah, uh, look, they were to get, when I was up there, they were together, but they didn't look like they were at that point where they were. Um grouped up they were just in the same location yeah. um i don't know I, w I wouldn't say that that stag was holding those hinds they were all together but obviously it was getting close um and there was a lot of hinds i didn't realize how many hinds that stag had around so so it can't be too far off oh. <clears throat> still pretty early so it's only third of april yeah well the best vocalization week i've ever had was the last week of march up there. that was two years ago so, though yes yeah, it yeah. two years ago last year well last yeah. year i didn't hear it i went up four times didn't hear anything till may oh, yeah. well actually no i heard something in that first last week of march at great at a long way off and then i actually heard something in 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 may which was just odd and that was it so there was hardly any vote and i went up three or four times through that period mm -hmm. so good so that's me well, they should be roaring, hopefully, in, in Nundal. I've heard, seen some posts. They're roaring in Nundal. Mm. They're croaking? No, and, and their little ones and started roaring. croaking. Mm. Yeah, I just uh, just spoke to a mate that's just come out. He's been there over Easter. 
uh, he said uh, the croaking was like it was all shutting off as soon as the light came in and only um, the last day he was there where they had a bit of a temperature change that um, they stayed out a bit longer but he was pretty convinced it was still the young ones just mucking about um, I think true to form but it's, we're going to get a lot of water there in the next week I think they're talking 40 mil or something to drop in the park over the next week and then the cold snap hits or colder snap it's going to drop down to frosty zero to sort of three degree mornings I think in the middle of the month and um, that's bang on the time that I think peak rut is anyway around that week of the 16th so perfect storm mm. I think it's nice yep. damp conditions yep. for stalking it's brilliant. It's brilliant. nice <laughs> temperatures mm -hmm. exactly the right time of the year bring it yep. bring it bring it bring it mm. yeah excited definitely excited it's gonna be good mm. all right let's talk to michael yes let's do it let's talk to michael are you ready mate <laughs> yeah ready to go ready to go <laughs> okay so I want to take you back. We'll take you back to, as Jono said earlier, December 16th, 2022, our Hunters Campfire episode, episode number 46 was when you came on and had a good conversation with us about your early journey into state forest hunting. Um, mm. we, had a, we had a chat about a whole bunch of stuff, but you were getting into state forest hunting with your bow and yeah. starting to crack on to the goats and exploring a few different parks. The one thing you left us with was that, um, you were still to take uh, your first deer on state forest land and it was a dream that you had and something you were working towards mm -hmm. and if anyone knows Michael Granger or has been watching the socials there's been a big hype this week because you were successful in taking a really nice fellow buck on state forest yeah. land so first and foremost congratulations what an effort Cheers. <laughs> years in the making yeah. and you've done it and it's an mm -hmm. absolute perler of a story that you've got so mm. kind of keen just to go back to um to where we left off a little bit and your experience i guess and and the time and effort and things that you've been doing to to hone your skills over the past two years leading up to this moment and then of course we'd love to hear about uh everything about the hunt itself yeah um, <laughs> so there's a good framework for you we'll ask questions yeah. as you go yeah for sure yeah well i guess i'll sort of start like yeah exactly where we where we sort of left off um yeah i definitely left the the rut before with a bit of a uh, bit of taste in my mouth because i had a few close encounters got a few full draw moments on deer that i i definitely changed a lot not just in myself but in my bow setup too there's a couple of things i changed on my bow and i'm um, after you know looking into uh different ways of approaching it um with especially with the uh the real close quarter stuff that bow hunters find themselves in in those situations in those state forests like most of the time you don't know the deer that is there until it's 10 yards away so uh made a few changes to the bow and um just via listening to like um i think it's a really good um spot that uh hunting is in general but especially bow hunting is with all the information out that is around at the moment um you've got podcasts like you, uh, yourself all the different podcasts out there like um becoming a bow hunter is all uh, is, is really great uh, great for the bow hunting um uh, our community all of them all together um i've got just a, a combination of listening to all those different podcasts by all the aussie bow, uh, bow hunters and then um applying all those lessons learned into the um into the stuff that i'm doing out there on the public land um uh, and yeah, it all just sort of started with a lot of pre-scouting trips. So after the rut um, last year, I uh, just was hell bent on because of bookings, really, because bookings get really, really, really um, uh, amped up during the rut. I didn't sure want to be though. left in the position. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to be left in the position that I was last year of only getting a couple of days here and a couple of days there. So I put a lot of time into exploring new forests that um didn't look too great on the harvest reports or anything like that. And that's one thing. So like I I won't really be disclosing any of the forests that I'm that, that I'm that I've been that, that I've been hunting. Uh, one because I'll cop a bit of flack for for doing that. Um, but the main reason why I want to do that is because for me public land. Uh, one of the biggest things I love about it is um is just 
jumping on the DPI reports, the harvest reports, where it shows you what games we taken and what and what forest. And then also as well, looking, doing research into the local areas. And for me, that means everything from looking at local property sales to uh, to to ringing up local B and Bs and uh, or stopping at the local pub and having a yarn to locals. And um, that's the quickest way to find out whether there's game in the area. And then from there, um, booking into a forest and then just putting in the K's to to, uh, to figure it all out. So, um, so that's where I spent a lot of that time um, between ruts, just going in the new forest and making sure I had backups of my main ones fell through. I couldn't get bookings. Yeah. So you, uh, um, yeah, you, you. When, when we spoke last, you were hitting the the, the normal forest. A lot of us were, um, yeah. and um, you know, you were heading out a little bit further west to some of the other parks. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, and we know we're not going to talk about the names of the of the forest because people are going to put the work in and, and get it done. <laughs> These are your spots, yeah. and you've worked for them, so that's completely fine. Um, but how many yeah. parks do you think you've explored now in the in the last couple of years to start to hone uh, in on something new for yourself? Yeah, probably about eight different parks I've hit, and to be honest, only two of them I haven't found game sign in. Um, it's it might be not as much as others but all of them like especially in that new england area i've been mostly focusing on that new england area um if you put enough time into those forests and i've just kind of transitioned what i've learned applying what i've learned from one forest as far as contour lines go where those same game sign is on those contour lines I'm, I'm bypassing all the stuff when I get into the forest on those new forests and going straight to those same contour lines, like, you know, vice, vice versa in those valleys and um, getting like a game sign straight away and then going, okay, cool, all right. They might not be rutting here, but they're definitely coming through here throughout those like uh, late February, early March um, uh, rubbing and all that sort of stuff. So it's a, yeah, a game of cat and mouse. <laughs> wow. Well, we, mm. it, 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 it absolutely. And are you finding... You know, you're saying that you're you're deploying the same strategy. You know, mm. you know what habitat looks like now. You've gone into yeah. these places. Yeah. You've found animals. We've talked quite a bit yeah. about deer habitat. Um, you know, creek lines and contour lines that you know maybe yeah, shelve hundred percent lines. Yeah. Do you do you want to add any more detail to that uh, about what you're looking for and and how you how are you stumbling across it? No, he's pretty much hit the the nail on the head with that, and that's a lesson that I've learned off you guys. Is those those creek lines, basically those first one or two contour lines, just up as seems to be the, the spot where I always find rubs and scrapes. That's not to rule out the high country. I've definitely found rubs and scrapes up on the high stuff, um, and especially like this this year more than last year. I found them uh, with the fallow sitting up a lot higher than what I expected them to. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that kind of threw me off a little bit and changed the game plan uh, around a little bit. Um, uh, you, you can kind of a lot of these forests you know a lot of people say like focus on the water sources but a lot of them there's not really any water water sources at all so uh it, that you can't really like i think some of them you can make a game plan on those water sources definitely but generally i found that uh, no, i just i, I checked those contour lines where i think they're going to be held up um and it's normally around those creek lines where there might be stagnant water or uh, or whichever and um without a fail whenever i go into a new forest every spot especially what with the fallow it's just the same story written over and over again it's just seems to be the way that they the way that they go in those forests at least in that new england area yeah so when you look you said you've been in what eight or nine different forests mm, yeah um what's your general um you know take on the condition of forest at the moment is there a lot of pick on the ground you know you did say they'd always don't have water sources but what, yeah. are, what are you seeing um in in that sense as well this year i definitely noticed it was a lot more drier than what it was uh than than the, than the last right as far as like it was just dead in comparison i was looking at photos um on trail cameras and then also photos from different scrapes and that that i've been to and um yeah the the dis the, the, the difference in the, the color variation and the, like the dead grass and the green grass was definitely noticeable 100 percent um, so I definitely think we've had a lot less rain coming up into this rut, which is why I think a lot of people might be um, uh, having a little bit of trouble this pre-rut stage um, with things uh, being a little bit slow potentially. I'm not entirely sure, but that's one thing I definitely have noticed. It's a lot more, yeah, not a lot as uh, not as green as what, what what it was last year. And with that, you know, the the approach of just basically coming off a creek line and and mm -hmm. contouring along that creek. 
Um, yeah. Again, what kind is that through hardwood? Uh, you know, um, vegetation is it is it all different types of vegetation that you're seeing that, or you mm-hmm. are you seeing yeah. more activity in in a certain type of vegetation as well? No, it's just unfortunately it's just down in that thick nasty stuff. <laughs> the I stuff where you look down and go, I don't want to go on there. <laughs> down, that's where you got to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, even if you got to bash and crash and make a whole lot of noise getting in, I'll do that. But then I'll sit there for a couple of hours and then I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bash and crash my way down in the dark um, to, to get into some rubs and scrapes that I found like on previous trips. And then I'll let everything settle down for a couple of hours and then. Um, I'll start with the uh, the croaks and the scraping and raking trees and rattling and everything from there. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And, oh. So yeah, and so and 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 by doing that, you're actually you're actually drawing them in in that sense. Yeah, drawing them in. Yeah, drawing them in. Yeah, like there's definitely times where, uh, like I've had opportunities to shoot deer um, in that thick stuff where because it's so thick of the winds being right we've just kind of bumped into each other. Um, mm. But unfortunately, it's always just been too thick to get to get a shot through. I've had plenty of moments leading up to that the, the deer that I got um, where I could have take, uh, got got my first deer that was just literally just kind of like um, the, the, the shots didn't present itself through that thick stuff. But then again, as well, I haven't really sort of changed my opinion on, um, on the shots that I take. I've still definitely let down on a lot more animals than I've shot because I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit, um, yeah, paranoid about my shot placement. So I want to make sure when that arrow if lets go that I'm 100% confident and that it's going to get the job done. Yeah, yeah for sure. Are, are those animals bedded up in that thick stuff or are they actually feeding in there? Sometimes, like throughout the pre-rut stages, I, oh, man, I definitely bumped a lot of bucks out of their beds. Yeah. <laughs> Work them up and yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but other times I've literally had them feed into me. Um, a couple of times I've noticed them before they've noticed me and I've been able to sort of prop down and just sort of let them feed into me or let out a few doe calls to sort of draw them in a little bit closer. Um, I had that situation a couple of times out there um, with a couple of other I had a lot of um, a privilege to, to get away with a couple of guys I've been hunting with for, for a while out over this rut. So um yeah, definitely. Um, uh, had some uh, some some definitely good uh, experiences that will yeah sort of will we'll remember forever. <laughs> that's for sure. Did it, nothing happen, but it was yeah yeah it was pretty pretty cool to be that close to them. Yeah. So with with the callers, are, are you are you just like yeah? Uh, is it a deer caller or are you just you just mimicking or you just yeah so there's some good ones at the moment so there's the bighorn uh deer call um for doing red calls or fallow croaks um i actually went out and done um uh kev shields and ian summers uh, uh bow hunting um and uh, a butchering course um leading uh, uh, into the rut and um kev had made us up these callers um uh for for the course and um that's what i was using during during the rut to um to uh to do the do the, the the fallow croaks um and it was a mixture of like yeah running those fallow croaks um breaking trees scraping the ground or or just coming into scrapes or and rub lines and just having a little bit of a tickle with the uh, uh with the antlers during that pre rut period there's been a lot of podcast um stalk outdoors done a good one with i believe it was brad smith and then also all the guys that um matty from becoming a bow hunter's hat on um, talking about different um, like uh, methods to to tackling um, getting the fellow bucks to come in, so I was just kind of yeah, just everything that I learned from those podcasts was just kind of throwing them all, throwing everything at it that 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 they taught. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. interesting. One, I haven't had that much to do with callers, um, so yeah, but I mean, it's a di- obviously yeah. rifle is different to, to me, buy, but yeah. To me, the one thing that I found the most useful um, was definitely the doe call, and like you, you know, you can still you know make the noise yourself. It's similar to a cat mew kind of kind of noise. Yeah. Um, after after you bump them, yeah, like you bump them, they'll bump up, and you let out a doe call, and it'll pull them up, and then you've got a little window there if you can, yeah, yeah. Give us a doe call. Uh, which i think that's the international deer call yeah, it's just like, yeah. i've seen people i've been watching videos it's some guy a, in latvia going, meow, call meow. Catches dogs. yeah all of that yeah. Uh, <laughs> i was just meow, curious meow. because uh i've heard this a couple of times that um making a doe call uh at this time of year is almost better than making croaks because yeah you're not going to get a mature dad a uh, mature dad a mature buck to leave his girls unless you're really mm-hmm. close and at that point you probably yeah. know where you are and where he is anyway um yeah. using a croak at this time of year is likely going to pique the interest of a young buck a young stupid one to come in um but a doe call 
is going to tell the buck that there's another one that's there that needs to be brought in and he's more likely to come out to you for that. Um, do yourself a favor, yeah. Google search fellow doe call. Mm -hmm. They don't exist. There isn't one. Yeah. I cannot find no. a single. So please, someone send me uh, some video. <laughs> someone, I don't call. I've someone, never heard. Of someone make one. <laughs> I've never heard that. Well, mute, said, it's, 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 I've never heard that's it. That's the international deer call. That one. I've yeah, seen guys do that I've, for I've, reds. I've seen them do for everything. Mew, mew, mew. I've that, never that actually thing. heard them make a doe call like no, that. I haven't, God, I've de I've, I haven't heard. I've it. definitely, I've definitely heard them bark. That's for sure. <laughs> Mm. I've, been, the I've, been I'm by red. I'm <laughs> I've never heard a mew, but I've, I've seen plenty of guys, uh, and I've seen guys pull them up. You know when they're yeah, yeah. That name, they, I don't say. I'm not exactly mm. sure how um what whatever that sound is, but it from? certainly gets their attention. Yeah, um, mm. I'd love to know. Mm. I'd love I mean, to know I'm, I'm pretty sure I've watched US things, and they do the same sound as well. Yeah, so, you know, it's and it just. <laughs> It's just a sound. It's like, hey, you, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so the doe call is working for you. What about rattlers? Are you using any rattling, uh, you know, yeah. rat rattle bag? Are you carrying yeah. antlers around? Yeah, I no, carry like some, uh, some, some, antlers, some shed, know. some, yeah, some shed antlers. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're going to be a Euro mount on the, on the wall <laughs> behind me, that's for sure. Um, but no, yeah, we, uh, I got a pair of um, shed antlers that I, I, I used to rattle in, but it wasn't really, well, from what I found, it wasn't really um, too, it didn't really start getting them in until that, my, like the 25th, 26th is when they started kind of responding to those rattles for me this year, um, which the, the previous rut, I rattled one in on the 24th and I seen two younger bucks having a, having a bit of a biff on the 17th of March last year. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Have you seen those, you so, know, the ones that are like the plastic yeah, on the, plastic um, and they the, click, click, yeah, click, Yeah, you got click. like the battle bags and the, yeah, mm, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're convenient with the size and stuff like that. I don't know. I just had a few blokes tell me that are, uh, yeah, using the actual actual casties uh, the uh, other way to go. So yeah, give them a bit cumbersome. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to sort of yeah shove them in your pack. <laughs> yeah, I've done. I've you know you hit trees and uh, with reds, and that mm. certainly works. Yeah, um, but again, you you might be right that it might bring in the younger bucks rather than the more mature or the ones holding because they'll kind mm. of go, well, why would I want to go over there? The girls are here, yeah. I'm here type thing. Because we yeah, did that up sure. in Brisbane. Oh, no, uh, Mary Valley a couple of times. And, and certainly when they were going towards the fence line, it certainly turned them around and brought them back in. So it, it got their attention. But I don't know if it brought in the big guy. It did, well, in, in, in the instance we did, it didn't bring any big uh, stags in, but it certainly brought stags that we were going to lose in. So mm. it works. Yeah, I think um, I think those big fellas are cagier than people give them mm. credit for. Sometimes they're smart. They are very they, smart. They are smart. They've got their girls. They know how many they want. They're not leaving them for you. do not matter how That's many right. stupid sounds you make. They're not coming. <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've certainly seen young ones. You can call young ones in, and they pop out and onto tracks and things like that because they hear it. They're social creatures. Mm. Um, until they're old and cranky. Yeah. Um, who, who would have thought the older you get, <laughs> the right. crankier, the less you want to hang around with young fellas. And and I, and I think they're very inquisitive too in many ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I, about four years ago, I think I've got some video of it. I just was cutting down this quite steep hill, and I looked over, and there was a young spike. I just literally, he's he was in Lantana, so all I could see his face, and he was just looking at me, and he's like. 10 yards he's just looking at me going and i was looking at him and i kept moving and he, he was in no he was just observing he wasn't in any kind of panic or anything he just watched me walk past so mm. very weird mm. but so i mm. think that's that's what it is especially for the younger ones they're just they're yeah. just curious mm. they don't know mm -hmm. better they don't know anything better that's the thing no they're just curious they go what's that thing <laughs> that weird two-legged thing over there and they go looking at it. but even you know even with uh with all, when I shot, uh, I shot a good pig a couple of years ago, and the day before I put a, a mate onto a pig, he'd never never hunted pigs before, and I put him onto one, and I saw the boar that I wanted to shoot, and when he shot, all the pigs kind of broke left, and the boar went right, mm. just yeah. went the other way, 
Your billies do that. They and, go in the opposite direction. And it took, yeah, it's same with the billy. Like a big billy, you, you get in a mob and the big billy will just oh, kind of go, oh, well, there's plenty more ghosts. Yeah. He'll just wander off me. There's plenty more of them. And so that's what happened. And I got the I got the ball the next day, but even then when I was, I was on to him, it was almost like he knew there was something up and he started to move Ooh. off. And I got him before he moved off. But, yeah, it was that, you know, that, that older – an older game animal in rather than a younger game animal and it acted a completely different way. That's why it's interesting yeah. that you about, you're talking about that contour line and what you're finding yeah. down there. Cause yeah. uh, do, you, do you think the big bucks are just holding up in that stuff? Uh, some, sometimes I did, uh, I did catch a few bigger ones up high as well this year, but generally I find, um, and this is something that, uh, um, uh, 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 Ian Summers taught me was that with the fallow, you'll find that when you do find, get onto their rubs and scrapes, um, you'll notice that they kind of form a big circle. So mm-hmm. wherever like the valley that you're in, if you start following, like you'll follow like a rub line and it will lead you into a massive circle. And, um, mm-hmm. as soon as he said that, I kind of, kept following those rubs and scrape lines around and around. And I noticed that, yep, I'm in the middle of what exactly he was talking about, a massive, a massive circle. And that might be a spread of like, well, the one that I was on, um, and that on that particular hunt was like nearly uh, maybe like a kilometer square. It was just kind of like just rubs and scrapes one after the next and even all the way through to the center of it. Um, and I seemed to find, I put up a few cams and stuff like that. And I seemed to find that, um, I couldn't really pick what bucks belonged to what scrape because they were all coming in and visiting each other's scrapes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, mm. it's, it, well, I've seen that, but not, mm. you know, more on private land when you've actually got the big oh, okay. expanse yep. to explore. Yeah. It's interesting yep. what you're talking about, what, how that might translate to those, that, that creek line gully, then what mm. kind of, yep. what kind of yep. circuit are they doing down in there? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I found that exact same circumstance in three different forests where along like it, may, it might be spread out over like maybe two or three different creek systems, mm. but they're all within that kilometer radius and they seem to be yeah, if you if you if you look at you got you walk around and you mark on a Venza all your all your your rubs and your scrapes and next minute you've created That's a massive circle. big circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. So yeah. do you reckon uh, and this is purely speculation, do you reckon they're following the contour line or do they cross an over? It seems to be, yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely sure because sometimes as well, like, you you know, you, they'll be on those same sort of contour lines and they might dip down into the creek and they'll be in the creek and then you follow them back up onto the next contour line um, and then follow them across there and they'll you'll create that circle that way. Um, but then in saying that too, I've been on literally on the, the top of ridge lines and there's been like a scrape and a rub up there and it's been like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, well. <laughs> Yeah, so you just got to stay switched on. You never know. You just never know what's going to what's around that next corner. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose yeah. it's also something to do with the kind of tree line you find in there. And you know, yeah, if you're, in, if you're yeah. in a if you're in a really heavy gully, there might not be too many, um, you know, advanced trees in there. There'll be a lot of lantana yeah. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so interestingly do they go looking for those as well so does that pull them out or pull them in different directions mm-hmm. yeah yeah no. yeah yeah i definitely noticed that they seem to take the past of uh the path of uh, least Absolutely. resistance mm-hmm. and through yeah. that thicker stuff yeah. but in saying that like it's still that path of least least resistance is still pretty thick. <laughs> yeah. So it makes it me wonder be. how them them big boys get through there like completely yeah, silent. It's yeah. like it, it's I can't I don't think science can explain that. It's magic. It, it, I don't, like, <laughs> yeah. In saying yeah. that though, I don't think they do. I don't think yeah, they I go guess. there silently. Like I've been sitting in the bottom of gullies and you hear them come yeah, thumping crashing. down. Like you can hear them mm. smacking through oh, and crashing I, through and breaking I've had stuff. That. Yeah. They're not that yeah. silent. I think um, the times that I've always thought that they were silent is when they're on the run, like then they they, they hear you or sent you and they bail. Um, yeah. And I think that's often because your wind is going to them and the mm. sound doesn't carry back to you. So yeah. it sounds a lot quieter, um, but they're always, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think they're that quiet. The does no. though, yeah, okay. they tiptoe like little princesses and off they go and they're like they're, they're just majestic yeah, the way yeah. that they can cruise through. But no, I've, I haven't found the bucks yeah. are that quiet. I was yeah. um I, I, yeah I was with uh, actually Ward and we bumped a doe off a fire trail and it broke the sound barrier it moved that fast <laughs> and then it hit the tree line and it did not make a single 
like twig snapped and we're like how the hell did that hit the bush that fast and not make a sound yes yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah i've heard you know stags and bucks moving through and they're not quiet it's just that yeah. they don't kind of walk like people they don't kind of kind of you yeah know, it's like a stop yeah so it's broken mm. up and i think that's the important that's what gla that's that's what glassing does for you it makes you mm. sound more like an animal because you're not kind of going from point a to point b mm. you're stopping all the time because mm. you'll hear them you know you hear a doo -doo -doo, and they'll stop yeah. and you go, did they hear something then yeah and yep you can hear them but they're only just moving a few steps yeah. and they're browsing again yeah. and just a few steps and browsing again that's right. Eh? Yeah, they're definitely sort of like they they mull around. Like they're not sort of yeah. yeah. They don't kind. Of, they're yeah. not like us going. Oh, I have to get to that ridge line. Need to get there. Yeah. <laughs> did, 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 and we walk straight to it. They kind of go. I'm going to end up on that ridge line, but I'm going to feed all the way yeah. there. You know, it's going to take me four it's hours. Cool. I'm going to meander. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I was yeah. watching these reds. They it took them about an hour to move. What from about two fifty down to one to one fifty. Mm. They're just yeah. going. Ee, 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 stop. Look around, do this, look, feed, yeah. stop, look around, feed. Oh, what's it over yeah. there? You know, that's right. <laughs> so, you just, so you, you know, you just, I was just waiting them to come down, but they were just slowly. Mm. And in fact, I was with, when I was, when I did that hunt with Joey and um, Jem, we spotted these goats at about 800 meters. And we just watched them come down to about 50. You know, they just slow, but they didn't. They'd kind of do this little sprint and then they stop and then they sprint and they stop again. And, and then one goat would run and a few other goats would chase that goat and stuff like that. So it, they moved at their own pace. They just muck around all day, don't they? Yeah, yeah that's it. They'd, like, you know, they'd be <laughs> feeding and one little goat would sprint off and all these others followed it and then they'd stop. And then the, the, the big billy would just kind of come stomping through, stomp, 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 find something to eat, keep going, mm. keep going. So they did move, but it took them some time to come down. But it was actually really great where we were because we were able to just glass them from real distance and watch them come right down until I took that shot. And that was yeah. 15 metres or so. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of going, should I shoot him now? No, he's getting close. Like, should I shoot him now? No, he's getting <laughs> close. Now he's, yeah. he's on the same yeah. format. And in fact, in the end, he was below me. He went so far. He, went, he was actually below, below me in the end. Oh, right. So. Hey, yeah. let's um, talk about the does for a sec. Uh, mm -hmm. We've talked about the bucks and the habitat that you've gone to, and that recipe yep. seems to ring pretty true. Um, yep. The bucks are obviously sitting up so they can look down on the does. Um, just mm -hmm. a quick follow up question to what you were saying with them being higher up. Where you've found yep. their scrapes higher up, have they had good viewing access down to the creek line, or have they just literally been outside the mould? Nah, I wouldn't call it, yeah, I definitely wouldn't call it good viewing access just because it's so thick. Like, you yeah. know, like mm. it's, you know you, even when you're in there yourself, even if you stand on the fire trail, you can't see more than five metres inside off, off the fire trail. So even yeah. if they are up on those higher areas, I don't, I, like, it, I feel like maybe more, maybe like uh, wind, like the wind and scent and your thermals. I think they, I think that potentially they might be banking on that to, for, as a safety mechanism. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, I can't, I can't see through that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's nasty. Yeah. Yeah. So then yeah. the, the next question then is you, you found the bucks where they are, um, obviously mm -hmm. there where they're observing the does. Uh, yeah. What is What are you finding as the um, the predominant habitat for the does themselves? They're down on the creek line. They're up with the bucks. Like um, what, what are you seeing? What's your observation? Yeah, seem to be in like, well, this year definitely seemed to be mostly down on those creek lines, like right down in that thick stuff, like during that, during this pre-rut sort of stage. And um, leading up until, I'm going to say like from the uh, 17th of March through to like the 24th, um, I'd seen definitely the, the, the does like sort of mobbed up together. And then it seemed like just overnight the bucks moved in, and yeah. um, and then it's almost as soon as they did that, there was like a night of like croaking and chaos, um, and then it just kind of like, and then the next day I was seeing bucks with like, you know, with like you know nine to ten does already trailing them, um, so yeah, it was definitely interesting to see, and then I definitely noticed the croaking kind of pick up a little bit as that sort of happened. Yeah, yeah. You think it was the young ones stirring the pot? Uh, I'm not. 
I'm still not too sure. I'm still not too sure, especially when uh, when I'm out there too, because I'm still at my learning phases. Like I'll see a deer, and it's uh, even if it's got like a reasonable size head on, I'm like, it's a monster. Like whoa! <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just excited to see a deer. So I'm still not too knowledgeable yet on on um on being able to tell uh oh, what's what. Yeah, it's still a deer. A deer's to, a deer to me at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. it's a good way to be, mate. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. no, no. Um, and uh, uh, when are you heading back to the same spot? Uh, not, not, nothing really. I don't really have a set pattern for it. It's you just don't? more so when I, when I can get away from home, <laughs> uh, when I can get down. Uh, any any window I get, um, I'll go in. I've got cams and um, I use those uh, those um, those Anaconda uh, cams, the cheap sort of nine hundred dollar ones. Um, I've got them up in oh god, half the countryside, <laughs> um, and then uh, if I get a quick window, I'll, I'll jump down into those forests and check out what I've got going on. And um, yeah, just that way you're sort of keeping your your windows open. Like ninety nine percent of my chance, well, not ninety nine percent of the trips I go on, I don't even see an animal, hundred um, percent. But it's all in build up to that rut, so that way I've kind of got a bit more of an insight of uh, what's going on when 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 uh, when it kind of the windows open up. Yeah, so. That's what you do, and then you're really just gathering information for the rut. You're yeah, not, uh, yeah, you're not hunting yeah. outside of the rut, or like I'm always. Uh, you never know what's going to happen out there, so I'm always ready for something to happen. Yeah, but but, you're kinda, actually, uh, but yeah, primarily just, you're there collecting information for the rut. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's dedication. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's dedication yeah. for you. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like uh, I, I, I'll, I'm yet to find it, but I don't know any other way to do it yet. <laughs> so it seems to be, yeah, the only way to go about it so far from what I found. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a, you know, worth mentioning. That's what you're doing. You're basically spending mm. a great chunk of time gathering information yeah, so you rut. can mm. create success during a, yeah. a very particular window in the mm. year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if I, and the reason if I, why I chose the the pre rut um, as opposed to the main rut window is that um, I noticed that last year, um, especially because like all these forests, like whether people want to believe it or not, like they're not secret spots, <laughs> you know, like they're booked out. So these animals are very pressured, whether it be by hunters, dirt bike riders, full drivers, local pressure. That the pressure's there already. So these animals are already um, on edge. So uh, I've found that. I wanted to be one of the first guys into these forests and during that pre rut period to have a crack mm-hmm. at them. So that way they weren't schooled up on those croaks, those rattles, those scrapes, and and they were kind of they were they were fresh into the area themselves. So they were coming into those areas as I was coming into those areas and we're meeting each other in the middle. Yeah. You're a man possessed, I'll give you that. That's a that's dedicated that's some serious, serious stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, you've that's thought a, about that's that. A, that's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's I right. love it. I love it. Yeah, that's right. Rut's <laughs> too easy. If I was to give you a little bit of, uh, I won't call it advice, but I'll give you a, a bit of information yeah. from what I've yeah, done yeah. over the years. Um, yeah. And I'm staring at the picture now, and we'll talk about the hunt in a minute. I'm staring at the mm-hmm. picture. It's, he's a really nice animal. Like you've done mm. a great job picking up a beautiful oh, animal. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would have been happy with, uh, with with anything, but, yeah, he just happened to be the, the one that come in at the right time. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I reckon... I reckon, and this might just give you the in- incentive to go and ask your wife for some more time away and your boss for some more time away. Um, it's pre-rut. Um, nice. Common theory is that this time of year, the young ones start early. They start mm. croaking. They start, you know, they start the pre-rut because they come in early yeah. to to to, um, mm. to freshen up the pads and to round up the girls. You know, they they are they come into season based on daylight hours. Um, yeah. I don't think that time is here yet. I think we're still yep. a week, still very, yep. maybe a little bit more uh, away from that perfect time. The only reason that I say that the rut starts around that mid-April period is that um, mm. every large mature buck that I've had anything to do with, uh, from memory, um, from ones I've shot to ones friends have shot, have always been uh, hot on those does in the middle of yes, April, April, especially in the <laughs> New England area. That doesn't change. Yep. I was talking to someone today, um, you know, um, one minute past 6 a.m. in the morning in 1912, <laughs> the, 
right, and on a certain date back in 1912, it's exactly the same daylight hours <laughs> yeah, for 100 years that the, the earth spins, right? It does the same thing. <laughs> Maybe it changed. I think someone said we're going to lose half a minute or half a second or yeah, something. Yeah, there is, there is a slight, a minute, there is a slight variance. The world does very, kind of, very, yeah, very but minute. But it's like, but takes some time. It ain't changing. Right, it's the, it's the daylight hours, and the daylight hours, the daylight hours. And sure, there might be rain, and there might be cloud cover, and things like that. But mm. basically, yeah. if that holds true, yeah. everything that I've seen uh, when I've shot a, when I've shot a buck, the very afternoon another buck takes that one's place. That yeah, afternoon, okay. like I shoot no, one in the morning. There's another buck taking no, on that man. harem that afternoon. And if what I'm saying is true, and believe it or not, and do your own research. Um, the big mm -hmm. buck in your area is about to show up. Yeah. Okay. So that gets mm. me excited about why oh, we want... you'd want to go back. <laughs> you've, taken, you've, taken well, yeah. <laughs> you've taken a nice buck. He's got pretty cool genetics. Like he's got, you know, he's, he's, I'm pretty keen to see more of it. But um, I'll have to, um, I'll have to show you guys. Uh, brother I'll looks show like. you guys one day in person, so it shows you what he. Yeah, yeah. show you what I, I've got no mm. idea about aging and stuff like that. The fellow that I was with, um, Josh Bennett, he reckons he's maybe like two and a half year old or nearly three year old or something like that. Right. I'm well, not too sure. Um, Where's this yeah, four year old yeah. brother? Where's this five year old? Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. About, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. about ready yeah. to come in. Now, if this guy was the yeah. most mature buck in the area, he wouldn't have shown mm. up yet. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's he he's mm -hmm. hanging back there because he's the mature big daddy that's only going to come in, you know, within a few yeah. days of that perfect light to chase those girls. The young ones have done all the work. Yeah. They've got them all hot and horny. They've cleaned up the scrapes. They've mm -hmm. done all of the work. He comes in and he takes over. That guy's not. He the takes guy. over. Go get the guy. Yeah. Go get the. Go yeah. get the <laughs> Uh, I would, but she's she's booked out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's booked oh. out. <laughs> Yeah. I'll keep on it. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. Um, public, that, public that, point about, <laughs> that point about, you know, in if it was not in 19, the evidence for that is the fact that there is red deer in the Brisbane Valley. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because when they got them, you know, they run around Scotland in the Highlands and someone kind of pushes them into a box, loads them onto a ship. No, it's, Nine months later. The deer, the deer that got released here came from Windsor Park. Yeah, but they all come from Scotland, don't oh. they? Oh, no, I don't think so. They're, they're, they're native species in the UK. <laughs> they, they came in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. Up there they came from the, the UK, Windsor but no, they came from Windsor Park. Great Windsor Park. Good genetics. So they, got, they, they <laughs> wouldn't have wanted put to be on a ship. She just got shot, Jono. <laughs> yeah, put them on a ship, get here nine months later, kick them out in the scrub, and, some, and, and then somehow miraculously they start mm. running. Mm. And that was because... That daylight yeah. hours, so, you know, the, yeah. the, this part of the world got to that point of time yeah. at the right daylight hours, which strange mm. enough happens to be almost about six months out of tune mm. with what happens in the UK. Yeah. yeah, and then they started breeding again, and that's what it is. It's that that there's a period of time where there's there's a ratio between daylight and 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 you know and dusk and and night, and when you get that point, and they they're their little bodies do what they their little bodies do. Mm. Yep. So I can go back through my records. Uh, like I said, I can see bucks that I've shot, bucks that friends have shot, bucks that have been madly croaking uh, where we've seen lots of does mobbed up, all, every single one of them within a certain period of four or five days, every year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm quite, I'm personally confident in that. Um, but that gives you a little bit of intel to go back like even if even if it's oh, after yeah, run, yeah. he's still going to be around yeah, a while yeah. and try and <laughs> try and hit that second cycle of that. But it's hard though now now that I've gone out and explored a lot of different forests and found deer in a lot of different forests. Now it's almost like I'm I'm spoiled for choices. It's like oh where do I, where do I go now? Like <laughs> so it's sort of yeah it's hard to it's hard to kind of determine. It really comes down to but that's what's a good part about it. If you do put in the, through the time and do that that pre scouting leading up to it, um, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter whether you don't get a booking where you want it. There's you have those yeah, backup options. options rather than yeah. sort of being being let down yeah yeah the the mm. other little thing that i'll throw into that whole concept of going back going back go back you know something else is taken over usually the usually the deer that takes over from the one you've just shot if he was the master like if he was the boss 
is yeah. could quite easily be a better buck. He's probably an older buck. Yeah. He's been pushed off by mm. this young, you know, right in the middle of yeah. his prime. The one that comes back in is likely to be the one that's been pushed out. So yeah, you get okay. this old dude with cool character and all that sort of stuff. Um, one year, a mate of mine, Trevor, he shot he shot the main. Oh, uh, you know, you've met Trev. Um, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He shot the main buck in this gully, and two days later, he went back and shot a bigger buck, but it only had one mm. antler. So he'd yeah, been okay. pushed out in a fight, mm. lost an antler. Yeah. Trev shot the one antler deer, didn't notice that it didn't have a second one. It was in the thick scrub down the bottom of the gully, exactly mm. where you're saying it should be. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was a better quality animal all over, just happened to be missing a side. So mm. that's cool. I love this stuff. Yeah, it's good. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> John, are you ready? Can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. Can't, can't wait. Um, all right. Yep. Shall we hear about this one? Yeah. Got any yeah. more questions? So I'll get any Before more questions we... about. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, buddy. No, let's talk about this yeah. hunt. All right. All right. So I'll start. I'll, well, it's kind of like a combination of a few hunts kind of all clumped together because I, I, I based my 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 pre rut my, my pre rut was what I was calling my rut. Um, so it sort of started with a few scouting trips I done with my mate Ashley Ward. Um, me and him have been hunting since day one from, with the public land stuff. Uh, we went in to check on a few forests um, that we didn't know there was deer in, um, and we thought we'd go in there and um, and just because of rumors and speculation, um, and straight away got onto rub sign like early, very very early March, um, uh, end of Feb. Um, so uh, that kind of set the tone for what was going to happen after that. So my first booking after that was to go back to those forests around that sort of uh, 17th to 18th of March. Um, young fella in the shop there, Jack, he come out with me uh, for that one. He managed to get a booking with me. Um, so a lot of the, 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 the hunting that I do now, I like to pack in um, just because I feel like if you drive in the fire trails, like I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm just making unnecessary noise. Um, I don't mind doing a few extra Ks on foot if I, if I feel like I'm not going to like blow out the area. Um, so we that's what we did. We um, parked up the top of a ridge line, um, probably about six to seven kilometers away from where we wanted to be hunting and started packing in. Um, but then on the way in, we soon noticed that there was already four drive tracks uh, <laughs> driving straight through the area, like potentially the day before we started uh, uh, trudging through there. Um, and we come across a campsite, which unfortunately was just covered in garbage, um, which it, that kind of, yeah doesn't sit right with me um and i actually carry extra garbage bags with me because unfortunately i do come across that i like to think it's not hunters that do that out there because it's public land and it gets used by a variety of different people um so we are we cleaned up that, that that area that was all full of garbage and stuff like that and proceeded onto the area where i'd found rubs and scrapes um went in there um and uh set up set up camp and then um proceeded to doing some first light and last light sits um some soft rattling um seeing if we could get a, a, an early um a young fellow to come in um but didn't see anything at all and some of the scrapes and rubs seemed to be like a day or two old uh so we um decided to i had that forest booked um and so and so did he um and then well nothing was really going on so we decided to um to bunk uh uh bunk, uh, bunk out of there and he was booked into a forest um uh, a neighboring that that place so um I, we went out camped up and then i decided to go in and i dropped gear and just went in with the blaze orange hat and um the camera and stuff like that and I, I, um and decided to you know, let, let him have a crack at um uh, at the next one because it was his only going to be his only uh trip for the for, for that, that pre-rut period um and we did bumper we did bumper a young buck off his scrape uh on the way in i was sort of like um, uh, uh, watching him go in and then we had a little bit of a rattle and a, and a croak over that but nothing nothing sort of come in so um definitely different than than last year's rut at that stage they were already responding to the rattles um that i was that, that i was having um so uh so ended up packing up there um sort of licking our wounds a little bit but you always take away positives from every hunt you learn and you uh, adapt and have a new plan for that area for next year so we've got a different approach for that for those forests next year um so i come back up to the gold coast and um and drop uh young young jack off and he done a solid effort out there we done a th uh, about a three-day trip down there so um hats off to young jack he yeah, definitely put in a solid effort um and then i made my way back down uh to another forest after doing a quick resupply and visit to the wife and kids and then on my way back down uh and then um went got down into the forest i arrived in the forest um the 
just the day or the, the afternoon before my booking had started and I already had another mate inside that forest, um, which is actually Ward. He had been in there for a couple of days prior to that, um, having a few experiences in there. So I um, drove into the forest and just set up my swag and just tried to relax and have all my gear ready. So that way, as soon as sort of um, first light hit um, and it rolled over into my booking, I was ready to go and boots on ground straight away. Um, so we spent a couple of day, a couple of days searching the forest, finding different scrapes and rubs that he had been finding. Um, within those couple of days together, we had a multiple um, opportunities on on, on does um, where we were just getting a full draw on them and the real thick stuff just literally just bumping into each other. Um, I knew like there's definitely a few times where I nearly shot my first deer just, just by literally just moving from scrape to scrape. Um, so we spent a, a bunch of time uh, doing that and then kind of coming up with different game plans and then being public land, you get met with um, everything that comes along with public land. So, you know, you've got dirt bike, trail bike riders, um, full drives, uh, neighbouring property shooting, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes. Yep. I'll pause you for a second. Um, yep. Would, would a doe have been your first deer if – the opportunity pre presented itself was a deer a deer oh, a deer or were you chasing a buck 100 percent. no 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 i wasn't no i was chasing like uh, whatever i settled my pin on and my pin felt good and uh and i was able to make a good shot that was the one that i was going to be taking yeah yeah i wasn't yeah um like uh, at the end of the day like uh, don't get me wrong like i love trophies 100 percent. i like I, i'll euro mount everything i get from a small nanny to anything i just love it all it's all memories from that hunt i don't it doesn't really bother me about size and stuff like that i'm mostly a meat hunter but i love i love horns antlers and um yeah big or small i i, I keep it all because it um it always when you're doing that day-to-day -day grind um we're back at home and you're wishing you're away on hunts it's all it's all memories and, and lessons learned yeah yeah cool just wanted to check because you're talking um, about bumping them but wasn't sure you were letting them go waiting for uncle buck no, to show 100%, up 100 100 percent. no i was i was yeah full draw um ready to let one let, let carbon fly yeah <laughs> but i just didn't this didn't happen um and then uh, Ash's booking come to an end. Um, so I was alone for a couple of days out there. Like I had other people booked into the forest with me, but I didn't end up running into them. Um, only person I ran into was a, uh, a, a DPI ranger. Um, that was my first encounter with a DPI ranger. And that was really cool. He, um, I, was, I had reception in a spot. I was actually set up for an afternoon rattle. And uh, he gave me a call going like, hey, where are you? And uh, I popped out onto a fire trail and had a yarn to him and stuff like that, which I was pleasantly surprised, uh, surprised with. He was a, um, a bow hunter himself. And um, it was really good to just sort of hear that um, guys that passionate about um, hunting uh, in the positions that they're in. Um, and that was nothing, but I, I speak, I can't speak any, any higher than that, that interaction with that DPI ranger. It was um, yeah, really, um, really encouraging to, to know that there's guys out there putting in the work that they are to, to keep this alive for us. It's yeah, really, really cool to see that. Um, just out so, of curiosity, uh, was there a reason he mm -hmm. pulled you out of the park? Um, there was a there because the, the the park was being frequented by like a, a, a multiple of different users, and on that current day, um, there was a little bit of shooting going on on some neighbouring properties that they're a little bit like sort of curious about. So they'd come out to investigate and kind of like do like a welfare check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, and then um, so yeah, that that all went down, and then I decided to go back to camp. At that stage, I was um, I was spike camped in, so I pack into the hills and I dump a spike camp and I hunt from there. So I I decided because I'd gone the long way around, I decided to head back to the vehicle and resupply and water and some uh, some freeze dries meals and and go back up and in. Um, and I had a couple of close experiences um, while I was out there alone. I had a little bit of a croaking battle with one where I sort of I heard him croaking, so I decided like, oh, why not give him a croak <laughs> back? And we ended up like croaking in towards each other. I don't know whether it was the same one or different one started arcing up, um, but it sounded like they were maybe like 30 yards away from me and we're just croaking at each other. It was pretty, it was a pretty cool experience. Uh, but yeah, it could have too. It's so thick in there. Even at that 20, 30 yards, you just can't see them. Uh, you really need to be right on top of them to be able to, to actually see them. So that was pretty cool. And then I, um, and then I come back down for another uh, resupply out of the spike camp. And um, that's when um, uh, a mate that I'd spoken to a bit over Instagram and stuff like that. That's another thing I've got to shout out to the, the, the Instagram hunting community. Um, uh, everyone that's shared messages and encouragement and stuff like that over these years, it's been, uh, you know, I don't think you guys know how much that's meant to me. It's, it's really, really appreciative. And everyone that I've reached out to with questions, been more than happy to help. So yeah, I, I really, you guys are definitely uh, joining me on this journey along the, along the way. And uh, one of those guys was, yeah, uh, was Josh Bennett. And um, 
Uh, I knew we had spoke prior to our booking that he was going to be joining me for my last two days or he was coming in for his his trip. Um, so we linked up and we shared camp on that first night and uh, we spent our first day together, um, me just sort of giving him a quick sit rep and um, showing him on, 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 on some of the scrapes and um, the active scrapes and some of the cam footage that I had going on. And he had hunted that forest before also. So he was showing me a few different scrapes and rubs and that that he had found prior in, in the year before. Um, and then, yeah, same thing. It was good too to kind of get clarification because I've been seeking out a lot of information um, and going on courses like uh, like Kev Shields and um, and Ian's courses, um, and um, and he had been doing the same sort of stuff down down south with guys like Brad Smith and um, Brad Smith, uh, uh, Brad Murphy and like uh, Matty Moore and, and, and guys like that had been feeding him information, and it was kind of like a collide of me spending time with those guys and him spending time with those guys, and all that information kind of coming together, and then I was trying to make a plan for, for what for what we needed to do out there to make it happen. So we um, straight away just got straight into work, um, uh, getting on scrapes, um, letting out letting out like soft rattling, letting out croaks, um, trying to figure out a plan. Um, from the 25th, we had a couple of different bucks come in, but just out of range. Um, and a couple of times too, where we had like croaked and rattled and they were on their way in, but they were so quiet when they're on their way in, we had kind of given it like maybe two or three hours till last light waiting on the scrape. And we thought, oh, you know what? She's all over. Time to get up and start heading back to camp. And then we'd get up and the buck would be like, like 30 yards away on his way in and we'll bump him coming out. So yeah, just, just heartache, nothing but heartache out there. Um, and then, so that was our first day together. And then um, our second day done a little bit more scraping. We were um, uh, not too sure on what to do at that stage. This was my seventh, uh, this was my seventh day into the, into that punt. So I was uh, definitely yeah, a bit, bit fatigued. So <laughs> Josh definitely was a, uh, Carrying, me, uh, carrying a bit of weight out there, keeping me keeping me going. And we put on a few stalks and uh, worked on a few different spots. And then um, we kind of got to a point in the day, um, mid-afternoon, where we thought, oh, we'll give it a, have a little bit of a break and a reset and we'll decide what we need to do um, from there. And um, we we're having a bit of a chat going like, oh, should we maybe just go chase some pigs or go chase some goats or something like that? And I thought, no, nah, I'm here for deer. Um, uh, we might as well just have I can come down and chase pigs and goats whenever I want this is my my window to try and get a deer down so I said we'll go sit on a scrape for the rest of uh, until last light and just see if we can have one last ditch effort at um, trying to yeah, trying to bring this all bring this all to an end. <laughs> so yeah, we we yeah saddled back up and resupplied on water and went back up into the hills and um, set it on a scrape that I'd had a cam on that I didn't honestly have too much action going on, um, but the battery was getting low on it. So I'm not too sure whether it stopped recording or not. It had enough battery to keep going, but I only had one butt coming into it. Um, so we decided to sit on that for for the last light sit. Um, and so we set up in the scrape and what we were sort of doing, um, and this is just through information we've learned from all the podcasts that are out there in the community and going to all these different courses that are, uh, that are out there at the moment. Um, so we decided to get in set up on the scrape and we noticed that they weren't coming directly into the scrape. They were coming kind of 30 yards off it. So we set up, uh, we set up kind of at nine and three just off the scrape. Um, and we decided that um, Josh was going to let out a few uh, croaks and, um, and then I was going to rake a tree and we're going to use that noise to cover the noise of us trying to clear shooting lanes and kick out the dirt from around us. So that way we've got space to move of, um, cause they come in from any angle. So mm. you don't want to be left, left with one shooting lane. Um, so we decided to do that. So yeah, a little bit of it, Josh let out a few croaks. Um, I raked a tree and we kicked out the dust and that. And I guess to a buck that just sounds like there's a, a buck moving into their scrape and kind of, you know, making, uh, making a mess. <laughs> um, so probably about, oh, I'm going to say, yeah, I could be wrong here, but maybe about 30, 30, 45 minutes later, um, nothing was coming in. And I remember thinking in my head, like, oh, I feel a little bit bad because Josh has got still another, he's got his whole booking here to go. Um, I don't really want to keep him out here till dark and then have to walk all the way back to camp and stuff like that. But I turned around to him and like signaled like, oh, do you want to sort of cut it out? And he's like, and he picked up his rattles and he's like, oh, I'll, I'll have a rattle. Um, so I was like, yes, yeah, we cool, awesome, Josh. And then um, the buck must have already been on his way in um, to the croaks and to the the commotion that were causing on his scrape because as soon as Josh hit those rattles together, I just caught a like just caught a glimpse out of the corner of my eye. He just come in full bore and he was not happy with Josh. <laughs> he was 
it was just making a beeline straight straight for him and i had enough time on the way in for him i, I was kind of in a kneeling position with an arrow uh, knocked already with my release aid on on the bow and so as i seen him come sprinting through and it's real thick foliage i just come to full draw straight away so that way if he come where i needed him to come i would already be at full draw and he almost comes sprinting straight past me, heading straight for Josh. Like he was just locked in on where that rattle had come from. And it was probably like 30 yards off the scrape. So he didn't care about the scrape. He was coming straight to where he thought the biff was. Um, and he come just charging in in front of me and I let out two doe calls. I let a doe call um, and then I let out a second one. And then on the second doe call, he just pumped the brakes and was just completely broadside like shoulders locked up together in position, like slightly coring away, not not like like barely coring away. And when he stopped, he was about maybe 10, 12 yards away from me. And I was already at full draw in my anchor, looking through the peep. And as soon as he stopped, my pin was exactly where I wanted it. And this is one thing that I've learned off um, going and seeing guys like Ian Summers and stuff like that and talking about shot, uh, shot processes and finding your shot. I'd spent the last cut, like year and a half breaking bad habits of trigger punching and, and all that sort of stuff and just focusing on like, I'll shoot every morning and I'll just focus on just breaking that shot, like not even aiming, just working on my shot process. So that way in the moment of I'm happy with where my pin is, that shot is just going to break. And that's exactly what it did. He stopped, he pulled up, he propped for me. Um, and I didn't even think about it. That pin's where I wanted it. I don't even remember taking the shot. It was just, I remember thinking in my brain, pins on him and that shot just broke. And um, I just watched the arrow disappear through him. And he kind of... Um, went on a bit of a death run he dropped his head and sort of kept continuing on the direction where josh was like probably mere meters away from josh and done a bit of a 180 and then started tumbling up he probably only went maybe 20 yards um and but it's so thick in there you still can't see that where he's gone so um and i was just a ball of emotions just hit me i couldn't i was stunned i couldn't believe what just happened <laughs> And uh, I knocked another arrow and I'm stressing and Josh is just hands up in the air, big smile on his face and come running over to me, you know, oh man, you pinwheeled him. And we shared a bit of an emotional moment and he's lifting me off the ground, hugging me and stuff like that. And I'm going like, oh, is he down? Is he down? And he's like, mate, he's down. And uh, But I'm yeah, real paranoid uh, when it comes to recovery processes. So I'm straight on my phone, set the timer, <laughs> going like, oh, I'll set the timer now and I'll give it like 20 minutes before we start blood trailing. And while I was just lying on the ground, kind of, you know, everything just kind of gathering my thoughts <laughs> and um josh started he went over to go have a look for my arrow and um as soon as he went to where i hit him um uh i took out i ended up i took out the top of the heart so the very top of the heart um so the entry and exit the blood trail was just like following someone had been walking along with a paint bucket um i used the uh Cayuga pilot cut which i've been a fan of uh, for a long time um and uh with the the new terra firma pre fletch four vein arrows which i've been a bit of a fan of for a while so that just yeah done the job perfectly and he come back and i was like um he was really good too because he's uh, right into his photography and stuff like that so he was taking photos and recording all the moment as it went down and then um uh, 10 minutes had gone by and I was like, man, do you, like, I was like, oh, I was stressing. Um, and he's like, nah, he's hundred percent down. Let's just start blood trailing. So I was like, okay. So we got up and um, we started blood trailing and it was yeah, easy as to follow, but I kept walking off the blood trail because I was just still scattered and, <laughs> and what had just happened. He's like, well, come back here. The blood trails are here. And, yeah. And then we, we stumbled, we were glassing, we were, we were taking like a couple of paces forward and then glassing and I had an arrow knocked just because um, I've been in situations before where you thought, you thought you made a good shot and the arrow jumps up. Uh, then the, then the animal jumps up again uh, so i had an arrow knocked as we approached uh, approached him and then he glassed him and then he goes oh, look through the binos and he was there lying down so uh, i kept an arrow knocked and walked up to him and then um as i yeah stand over the top of him and yeah just all kind of reality still didn't even hit yet it was still surreal like i still couldn't believe that it, you know last seven seventh day of a seventh day hunt last sort of two and a half three hours of legal light uh, and a three-year journey all come to a crashing end in like less than 10 seconds it was yeah <laughs> yeah pretty pr pretty crazy so um so we we're losing the light so um yeah josh done his best job to take some photos and that and, and and do justice by me and all that sort of stuff and show me what he had learned over his uh over his um uh, over his journey with hunting and um and going up on the Cayuga adventures and stuff like that and took some good photos and then we just went straight to work and, and butchering and um 
took as much meat um, as we could. So I took all, all, all the quarters, um, the back straps, all that sort of stuff in, in, in the head. And then uh, we were packing out in the dark. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a hike back to camp. So um, yeah, but um, I'm definitely, I'm definitely grateful for, I've started running the uh, Kafaru. Um, I don't know if you can see the hat there, the Kafaru, um, Kafaru frames and packs. Um, I've got a bit of a bugger back. So those stiff, rigid packs, they're definitely, um, I packed out a whole buck and I barely felt like I had 10 kilos on my back. So they're definitely, yeah, they're a bit pricey, but um, yeah, when you're out there doing that stuff, especially for that kind of prolonged period, and if you're packing in and carrying in all your water and food and stuff like that, you definitely got to take care of your pack. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take care of your back. That's for sure. What a story. Well done, yeah. Mate. <laughs> yeah, no, ah, I think looking at the photos, it's so cool to see um, you've taken this guy in that scrappy Casarina country, you know, mm. um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, you just, it's just not, you, you walk through some of these places sometimes and you just think there's no way, there's no way. Yeah. And you've, you've persevered, yeah. and you've, you've, you've found them in there. So that, yeah, yeah. That's where they are. Like, it's like, I found like, cause especially too, when you're standing up in that stuff, you can't see more than a meter in front of you. You know, you take a kneeling position and you can kind of see maybe 10 to 15 yards. Um, but that's, yeah, that's where they are. That's, you know, there's a reason why they're there. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. the photo that you've taken down at trunk level, because the eye level mm. is a lot lower, doesn't look anywhere as thick as you no, described. It, do, it, it doesn't do it justice. No, it definitely doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to go back yeah. to one of the things that you said. Um, you know, when you were, you said you were having your rattling fight um, previous yep. days before, mm -hmm. uh, and you said yep. that, you know, uh, you were rattling mm -hmm. them and you had this, this back and forward. Um, rattle and you couldn't see 30 meters in front of you mm -hmm. so they were right there but you couldn't see them couldn't what see was them, the yeah. strategy yeah like what did you think you i were don't know do i was just see anything with i don't you? I was just hoping yeah. that I'll get one. I think I was just hoping, like, I'd, uh, I think I'd watch too many elk hunting videos <laughs> and I thought that one was just going to come charging at me or something like that. So it was, I was actually croaking. We were croaking yeah. back and forth at each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It end, was, uh, that was like exactly a, right. yeah, in the delusion of like that, the fourth day, fourth day packing delusions, being a, yeah, alone for a couple of days and yeah, just running wild in the bush. <laughs> I think this is just the ultimate experience. You know, we, we talk a lot on the podcast and Mark coined the, the phrase average Joe Safaris. You know, we mm. you watch a lot of stuff in the US. These guys, they pack in, they pack in for seven days. They're in there for a long time. You know, they do their reese up. Um, you know, you're, you're, I said it to you a minute ago. Oh, what was what did I say about you? You're bloody... Um, yeah. oh, I don't know. You, 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 you're completely focused on this process. Yeah. You're a man possessed, is what I said. And yeah. I, I think your, your process it's, right from the beginning <laughs> of you know, parking seven, seven kilometers away is a, mm, is a, yeah, it's a yeah. long way away, man. Seven yeah. kilometers away yeah. to just I to think, minimize the a, sound. I just think that's, I think it's a, it's so yeah, good that you've done I, it and you've back and forward out of there uh, a number of times to resupply and you're back in there and you're doing it. Mm, you've got new, yeah. new buddies coming to show up to company, keep you sane. Mm. Buddy, how, what a cool story. That's, I think that's, that's awesome. awesome. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a combination of uh, stubbornness and stupidity um, <laughs> to, to get it done out there. <laughs> it's a yeah, winning combination of both. <laughs> well, we... so it's the, it, hunting is the, I, I heard someone say, or read it somewhere, it says hunting is the, is the art of becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. I think 100%. That's, you, yeah. that's, that's what yeah. it is. The, all of the, yeah. This whole story is about I'm going to be uncomfortable and I'm going to be completely comfortable with that <laughs> because this is what I want yeah. to do. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what yeah. it is. Which is, a hard, which is a hard thing to do. Like most people, you know, especially if they haven't done much camping and that before, like I'm meeting a lot of guys that are wanting to get into hunting and like, you know, they've maybe done a few camping trips to the local Big Four camp park, you know, and then they, they get out into the uh, big bad state <laughs> forest and it's kind of a bit daunting yeah, yeah, and, definitely. you know, you're away from all your luxuries. You don't have, you don't have receptions and, and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a bit, it can be very daunting out there but um i was i think i was um yeah, privileged or, or unprivileged i don't know which way you look at it but uh, i spent a number of years in the army sort of doing that being being uncomfortable so mm. uh, yeah it's just kind of second nature to me good base, good base yeah. to build from, yeah. that's for sure yeah that's it <laughs> and i uh, i take yeah. my hat off there uh you're um i'm assuming you're buddies with tim moore 
Yeah, Tim Moore. Yeah, um, just just before the, the the rut coming up, yeah, me and him shared some time together and working on his bow and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. sharing some tips on some forests. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's come into our our hunt camp the last couple of years, and again, yep. you know, he's he's sort of cut from the same cloth. He's 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 mm-hmm. he's also oh, a man. He's dedicated. He's first up. He's yep. last back. He's dedicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I know that he's been in situations where he's basically been pinned down by bucks and he can't get up and he can't draw and he can't move, but they're there. Um, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a tough game what you're mm. doing bow hunting. So yeah, I, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I've I've got a lot of time for for guys uh, like Tim that are yeah going out there and and doing them hard yards. We share a kind of like a uh, what do they call it? Um, like that um, uh, trauma bonding. <laughs> We might not be out there together, but we're all going through the same uh, the same experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So no, yeah. Anyone that's gone out there, that's you know, reached out to me and that. Yeah, I'm more than happy if I see guys are putting in the effort and and going hard out there. Um, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll move heaven and earth to, to help them out. That's yeah. awesome. Survival syndrome, mate. <laughs> I like that. You need a t-shirt. You need to make yeah, a t-shirt. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's it. You can be like, you know. <laughs> I'm now yeah. in the trauma club. I've killed a, I've yeah. killed, I've killed a deer, yeah. deer with yeah. the bow and arrow. Tra- so. pu- pu- yeah, publicly in buck, buck trauma. Tra- <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, all right. Well, uh, probably the only other question I was hanging on to um, a little bit mm-hmm. was um, now you've now you've done this. How how many times did you scout this block? How long did it take you to find this and say, "Yep, there's deer. I'm happy with it." How many return trips? Like, you know, I know you've, um, you've visited a lot over a couple of years, but this mm. park particularly, once you've zoned in on it or honed in on it or zoomed in on it, um, yeah. how much effort did you put into it to get to this final step? Um, to be honest, not a whole lot. Like once I once I established that, look, I think this is a good forest, I kind of, like I put up some trail cam, cams and then I, I was like, all right, there's deer rutting here. I knew they were rutting there because I was there the, the, the previous year before and I kind of just put it in the back of my head. As much as I wanted to go back there, I was like, no, nah, I, I need to put into some time in some different forests and come up with some plan Bs if I don't get a booking there that I've got some some backup options, which led to a lot of um, different opportunities out there as well. So yeah, like, oh, look, I would like, I want to, like now that I've kind of, done a lot of scouting and I've kind of got my main forest. I think I will pay them a little bit more attention um, than what I did in the previous year. Um, but we, you know, and, and I don't expect everyone to be able to do that. Like I, I'm, I'm sort of blessed that my family and, and my wife are bloody awesome. And um, they realize how much this means to me. And uh, I try and do what I can on the home front. So that way I can, they're happy for me to be away when I can go away. And even if it just means like, I'll take any window I get, even if it means leaving work at, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, I'll drive all the way down to a forest that night, scout all day, and then drive back the next day um, just to go check camps. Uh, um, like I wish it wasn't that. I wish I lived down there. <laughs> I want to move down there. It'd be, it'd be awesome. But um, but whenever I get those little windows, um, and that you know, a lot of people go like, oh, like how can you, you know, it, it, that hunting's different for everyone. Um, like a few guys say like, oh, I just want to get into hunting to harvest meat, or I just want to get animals down and all that sort of stuff. And that, and and that that's great. Like it's all it's all part of it. Um, hunting for me though is that I like to um, I like that that. I always have to have a hunt booked. Like even right now, I've got a hunt booked and I'm planning for that next hunt. And I'm looking at the same thing. I'm looking at Avenza. I'm looking at maps. I'm looking into local areas. Um, and I just find it having a, a goal at the end of like, like each month, each working day, where I can just kind of um, get home, get the kids to bed and settle, have a chat to the wife and that. And then I just lay in bed and I'm just, I'm constantly thinking about that next hunt um, and how I'm going to approach that hunt and what I'm expecting to find. Um, and I just find it, yeah, it just helps me, yeah, keep on the, the trails and operate as a functional human being. <laughs> yeah, it keeps me, keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. Michael Granger, the man. A man yes. possessed. Yeah. 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 You just yeah. got to have a, it's a, it's a pursuit of worthy game. That's, that's what mm-hmm. hunting is. Oh, yeah. You, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. The rest is yeah. the pursuit. Yeah. 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 And not that, not that, like, I, I never want to take anything away. Um, like, a, cause a lot of people think, uh, have said to me like, oh, like, like, why do you only hunt public? And to be honest, the the most, the, the first answer that comes to my head is that it's convenient, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
you know, uh, I think I've used the phrase before, fast food hunting. I can book and go whenever I want. You go straight yeah. to the drive through I'm, I'm there. Um, uh, but I don't think whether, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that public's harder than private or anything like that. I think it just, it's got its, it, it, it's got its own pros and cons and every, every block, every forest is going to have its own hurdles to, um, to jump and leap over. Um, I haven't found a forest yet or, 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 or heard about a private block yet that, you know, is, is a carbon copy print of the next. They all got their own, um, their own uh, challenges to, yeah, to, to, to battle with. Love oh, it. Amazing. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing. Mate, give us a plug about who you're working for. Uh, yeah, so I work at Apex Hunting at the moment. I've been there for a bit over a year and a half now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been really good. Um, allowed me to a good, a good work life balance and be around the stuff that I love, uh, I love every day. And, um, same thing, every customer that I've had shared phone conversations with and stuff like that, or served in the shop. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to, to talk about hunting. And uh, I do, I do push the class R system because it's something that, um, you know, a lot of uh, Southeast Queenslanders struggle with is finding, uh, uh access to, to properties. So I definitely do push the class R system a lot. And then through that, um, I, I definitely Definitely get a lot of um, messages via Instagram and stuff like that, and um, and uh, uh, oh yeah, I'm more than happy to help uh, where I can and um, steers in the, the the right direction or or, or lead us up the garden path <laughs> sometimes. So, you know, it's just one of those one of those things out there. Um, uh, I swear, I swear that was the last time I was there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, de- it's definitely really good, and we've, we've we've been getting a lot of new products coming through, like all the marsupial gear. Um, I'm super psyched about the kafari gear, um, which um, me and young Jack have recently just sort of taken over the uh the socials for kafaru australia um so we'll start posting up our content out there there because we're using the gear out there so we so we thought we may as well start putting up this stuff so if you have any uh kafaru um um uh question queries or, or problems yeah shoot them shoot them our way we're more than happy to help uh, you know, anytime or um, yeah definitely yeah just want to just want to build the community so that way we have a um, bit of a, a back foot to stand on when um when people come after us <laughs> um, that's fine. good, good on you, mate thank you yeah. Good work. All right. I think that's probably us. We might wrap it there. We'll keep the excitement at that level and, and, and not go too much further with it. I think that's really awesome. Um, yeah. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, it's no, a pretty. No, no, they are. We yeah. saw a break on socials. You sent me a message. I don't know how long after it was that, you took that animal. I was bloody pumped. It, it was. It was only hours after. It was, on my, it was on my way out. I stopped at a server to get ice, and I was like, "Oh, I got a message to the, the, the Hunters Campfire boys. You've been a massive inspiration uh, for like it, it, everyone that I know that, that talks about um, uh, public land hunting. You guys have, uh, yeah, gone above and beyond um, with that, and definitely um, shown." like bringing it to a lot so uh, from yeah i can't thank you guys enough for, for everything that you've done for the for, for the public land hunting community for sure that's right we'll give yeah, it's amazing one Mate, more you're the example of what want we want everyone to be like honestly <laughs> if we can know, yeah, it, well, then, you know wind yeah, you up and point yeah. you in the right direction well, and off oh, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it no. that's it you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's what well, you know. You, you guys have, um, they say you're a product, your environment. You guys have created the environment for us, and now I'm seeing it even through the shop every day. And guys, like you said, like Tim Moore and um, Dave Willie, and uh, guys like um, uh, Ashley Ward and Dave Hope, then all, all these public land hunters that I'm seeing coming through. I'm, I'm watching it just get big, it grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger. And it's yeah, absolutely amazing to see. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. And if you want to know where Michael took his deer, just go and look at the geo stamp on his photo on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Life, yeah, down there. Get, yeah. You see yeah. the newspaper wrap. Look for the data. Yeah. Newspaper wrap. Yeah, right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or just buy me a few pints down at the local, and I'll probably get a bit loose lipped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's if you're at the local. Sounds like you'll be yeah, in the, park. in the bush. Right. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, mate. Well, All thank right. you very much. Too good, mate. Awesome. awesome. Cheers, guys. Okay, buddy. Good work. Talk to you. Eh?